Welcome to the joint session, Analysis and Lead Theory and Generalization. I am Toshiyuki Kobayashi from the University of Tokyo. The next speaker is Mikhail Dudasale, senior researcher in Lyon, France. Dudasale obtained his PhD in 2009 at University Pierre Marie Curie under the supervision of Gilles Bissier. His research area is functional analysis. Kazdan's property T is the rigidity property of unit representations of locally compact groups, which has a wide range of important applications. Several strengthening of property T have been considered over the years. Durasale gave a breakthrough proof that every lattice in a product of a higher rank simply used has strong, strong property T. The title of his ICM talk is Analysis with Simple Leaves and Lattices. So please. And so the, the, so the topic is uh, doing analysis with, with simple Lie groups. So we want to do analysis with groups which, and lattices, so which groups which mainly come from, uh, from arithmetic origin. And we want to, 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 to understand how, the, this, um, how the, the arithmetic origin of the groups have an effect on the analytic objects that are naturally associated to it. And for the sake of concreteness, I will not talk about any general theory of arithmetic groups or arithmetic lattices or number fields or functional fields or whatever. I will just focus on one example, the simplest one where actually all the mathematics, all the interesting math is happening already. So it's the group uh, SLDZ, so the D by D matrices with integer coefficients. So you, you see integers in, the, in this, so that's why it's called an arithmetic group. And I will then devote uh, uh, a large part of my presentation to, to, to present some questions. Some, some of them are old, very old and still open. Some of them are, are less old and uh, some of them have been solved. And I will. Uh, I made the choice to 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 to, fo to go in four di different directions. That I will. This will be a bit uh, a fast. A, su a fast survey on four different directions where the, there are many interesting things happening. So that will be Fourier analysis, then appro approximation properties of mainly Banach spaces or operator algebras. Uh, then I will give a, a f spend a few minutes on on on, on Zimmer's program, which is a. Uh, the re recent uh, pro resolution of Zimmer's conjecture by Brian Fisher and Hodado on actions and low dimension manifolds of arithmetic groups. So I will explain that and why uh, why this has wh why this is happening in in this lecture too. And then I will spend a few words on group actions and Banach spaces and the interaction between the geometry of the groups and the geometry of the Banach spaces. And then we will see, actually, the, uh, the main message that I want to give is that all these questions, all these results that have been obtained in, in these analysis questions, they, they all share the same feature, that is that the standard tools to perform analysis with this kind of groups, they all fail. And, they are, uh, and, and there is one idea that came from the work of Lafogue, which which is very different to anything that was done before and which allows to, to solve all these questions with exactly the same method. And my, my main message of today is perhaps not all these analysis questions. It's mostly that the, this tool that, that we have been understanding in the past 10 or more years, uh, the, the it's, it's something that, that allowed us to, to make progress on, on many questions and uh, I, I hope that this is not the end of the story. So uh, uh, if there is something to get out of this talk, it's there is one simple idea, which is, which I like to call rank zero reduction or compact reduction, which is, wh which which has turned to be to be useful, and uh, which I believe I it's not the end of the story. And I, I want to advertise that. So first, go to the, the very basics. So uh, let me just, uh, I think it's not necessary, but what is SLDZ? So it's the group of D by D matrices with integer coefficients. And it's a group for group multiplication because the, the inverse of a D by D matrix with determinant one still has determinant one and still has uh, integer entries. And so of course it depends on parameter D and it's very well understood now that 
there is a clear distinction between d that is 2, d equals 2, and d larger than 2. d equals 2 is what we call rank 1, and d larger than 2 is higher rank, and there is a very clear distinction between the two. So w one very simple thing is that uh, SL2, essentially, it's a free product, so this has lots and lots of actions, actually. And PSL2 is a free product of a, free gr of a group with, 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 uh, with three elements, a group with two elements, so just to construct an action of SL2Z, it's enough to construct, uh, uh, to, to find uh, an element of order three, an element of order two, so it's, it's very flexible. It's this SL SL2Z can appear in many, many different ways. And so this is less easy to, to justify in a second, but now it's very well understood that in for SLD with D larger than three is completely different. The, the the group will not act unless there is a good arithmetic reason for which for it to act. That's the general belief of uh, th that we have and the, the, the very the clear distinction between D, D equals two and D greater than th than two, strictly greater than two. And I will just state one result just to, to that expresses uh, a concrete result that expresses this strong form of rigidity for, for SLD for D large. It's a cash dense theorem which says that SLD of Z has cash what we call now cash dense property T, meaning that the, the in the space of all its unitary representations for the natural topology that you have in it, the trivial representation is isolated. So uh, this will not be so much central in the talk, so I will it's not very important that that I, I express what this topology is, but this is a result that uh, that has has profound impl profound implications on on the development of many aspects of uh, analysis and ergodic theory and uh, geometry of uh, of these arithmetic groups, and uh, that is uh, that is false for d equals to two for for, uh, for very easy reasons. <laughs> okay, and now uh, as I said, so th there is one general method, which is not the only one, but is the, the main method that encode, uh, that contains very, very different variants to, to study such groups. So the, the f so it's usually you, you proceed in two different uh, steps. So, so you if, if you are wondering about something about SLDZ, you exploit this theorem of Minkowski in this specific case, which is, uh, which is in, in the general setting of uh, of, of, of algebraic and arithmetic groups, it's due to Borel and Harish Sandra, which says that SLDZ is a lattice. So lattice, it means that it's a discrete subgroup of this Lie group SLDR, and moreover, the the the, the covolume is finite. So the, the it has a fo the fundamental there is a fundamental domain with finite Haar measure inside SLDR. And so this this thing says that from the measure theoretical point of view. SLDZ and SLDR look uh, much much alike. So, it, and it's, it implies that many for many questions, you can reduce the questions about the arithmetic lattice to the question about the, the Lie group. And then, so the second, I, the second thing is how do we study the Lie group? And actually, very often, one uses uh, in a way or in another, in sometimes in a hidden way. But we, uh, it's it's kind of clear that many many ways, many times we study the, the uh, big, simple Lie group through its SL2 copies, and I'm just giving one example. So so one of the important aspects of the, in particular, the study of of the dynamics of higher rank groups is the study of unipotent flows and unipotence, so the the the, the, the actions of the subgroups made of elements of determinant one. And you have the jacobson morozov lemma or, or theorem, which says that any such unipotent element is just studying unipotent elements is exactly studying the SL2 subgroup. So, and it's <laughs> sometimes, you know, for, for so sometimes the you can do SL2 reduction directly on the on the arith arithmetic group. So you can study SL3z through its cop the copies of SL2z that is contained. So for sometimes the the first step is not needed, but the 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 the, the, the SL2 reduction is really, in my opinion, the, 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 main, the main tool that, that has been developed so far. And it's extremely useful, it, it takes and take many forms. And as we will see, this, this thing, which is in general is, is a very good idea to, 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 to use this direction, does not work for many questions that I will discuss now. Okay, so what are these questions? So now I want to, to, to start with talking about Fourier analysis. And if I want to talk about Fourier analysis, it will, uh, it will be Fourier analysis with non-abelian non groups. So the, 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 the good 
framework for that is the, the group operator, operator algebra. So, so now consider if gamma is, is a countable group, so which later will always be SLDZ, uh, we can consider the, the group phenomenon algebra, which is just an algebra of bounded operators on L2 of gamma, which are just the left convolution operators. So you consider all the bounded left convolution operators, and this gives you an algebra, so a, a vector space that is stable by composition. It's stable by taking the adjoint of the operators, and it's also closed for the Wicks topology. So this is what is called a phenomenon algebra. And uh, as the, the motivation from that is that if you take for, for gamma an abelian group, for example Z, by Fourier transform, your Fourier transform changes uh, multiplication to convolution and convolution to multiplication. So, so you see through Fourier transform that naturally this the fundamental of Z is just the n infinity space of the topology, the the, the point triangle dual of, the, of Z, and uh, explicitly uh, uh, to a bounded function on on the dual, we consider the, the, the sequence of Fourier coefficients, and this is the, the convolution by this sequence that that is the that that it belongs to that is the convolution operator. And so, what we know very well from uh, from uh, the first the work of Remenemann and then of, of Cohn later that the, the taking the fundamental algebra, you you forget a lot and lot and lot of the structure of the group. So, uh, as I said, for a billion groups, they are all the same. Actually, for a minimal groups, they are essentially all the same. But in sharp contra contrast, conje uh, Cohn conjectured that. Uh, for for this arithmetic group, higher rank arithmetic group, for SLDZ, the, the fundamental algebra, they are all distinct. So this is a very special form of a much stronger con conjecture by Cohn, but this is a this is a this is a result that uh, conjecture that is a, that has been very influential in the field of fundamental algebra and uh, I, I want to come back to this later when I have discussed a bit more Fourier analysis. Well but for for me you know the the, the, the I'm mainly interested in the group fundamental algebra just because this is the place where the interesting Fourier analysis questions can be asked. And so what are the, 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 the interesting Fourier analysis questions that, that I'm, uh, I like to, to, to study? So first, uh, let me state something extremely classical. It's m essentially almost 100 years old. Uh, it's about convergence of Fourier series. So I guess most of you who, who are teaching know that if we have a, a periodic function and you consider the, the Fourier series, then the, you just take the truncated uh, partial sums of the Fourier series. You can ask whether it converges. So asking for almost sure convergence is a dif very difficult uh, result that has been solved by very famously by Carlson and then Hunt. But uh, but but for the LP convergence is much easier, and uh, it's 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 a it's not an obvious fact. It's a, it's a small it's a theorem by Ries, which says that if P is not one and not finite, then in LP the the partial sums converges to F, and the, the it's very important to 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 remove one and infinity because for one infinity it's simply not true. Okay, this is a phenomenon that we we all know when we learn about Fourier Fourier series. But what is actually a very easy fact is that it's due to Feger, and it says that if you do not take the trunca brutal truncation of the Fourier series, but to take a Caesar average of them, then you have uh, LP convergence for all P. Well, with, with the obviously, you need to, f when P equals infinity, you need to assume that F is continuous to, to, to have that polynomials converge in an infinity norm. But uh, okay, th so so this says that okay, perhaps taking brutal uh, Fourier truncation might not be a good idea. But in general, I in this setting of Fourier series, you, ca you you can find some summation methods that are more clever that allow you to to reconstruct the function in norm from the sequence of Fourier coefficients, and this holds exactly the same for if you replace Z by any other abelian groups. And it turns out that s since I, I made the effort on the previous slide to, 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 to define the group for the manageable for also for the abelian groups, the, the question of, uh, of having such uh, clever summation Fourier summation methods makes sense for arbitrary groups, except that I did not yet tell you what is the P norm. So I have to first to tell you what is the P norm, and then we can discuss the question on when 
uh, is there some interesting Fourier summation method? So, so the, the you, you just uh, so it's uh, you just copy the definition if you want of uh, uh, naively or, or in the abelian case. So if you to define the p norm, wh what you do you raise the function, you take the absolute value of the function and raise to the power of p. You take the integral and take the power to the one over p. So here, the taking the absolute value and taking the power of p makes perfect sense by functional calculus, and integrating a function. It's uh, the same as, as, as picking the trivial Fourier coefficient. So le let's do that. So we pick the trivial coefficient of modulus f to the p, and we get a norm. You, the same proof that the LP norm is a norm is that says that this is also a norm. And in the same way, formally, every element in this non-cognitive LP space of the fundamental algebra of gamma, of gamma has a Fourier, a Fourier series that is only a, a formal Fourier series as, a priori, as in the... Uh, uh, as in the, the sequ in the in the Fourier series of the on the torus, and we say so. So this is what I, this is the natural notion. Now we say that there is a LP Fourier summation method if there is a way to reconstruct the function in a, a, any element in LP from its sequence of Fourier coefficients in in, the, in this way. And of course, when p goes to two. Every we have uh, Euclidean spaces, so uh, the, the, the convergence is the L2 convergence is clear. You, you, you can there's no reason to be to be smart. You can just truncate uh, in an arbitrary way and you get L2 convergence. But for p, that is not true. It's 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 not completely clear. But there is no single example of any group for which uh, uh, I, uh, uh, we don't know whether there is any LP for for your summation method. Uh, even for p equals one or infinity, this is this is a this is kind of a, 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 a funny thing. But so there is no example known. Uh, but most for most groups, we know that there are Fourier summation methods. So for ab ab amenable groups, this is something that is very old. And for the for 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 for, for groups SL two Z, for example, this is the this is the the groundbreaking. Uh, Break the breakthrough observation or theorem by by Ufer Hagerup in in the late 70s that that made him create uh, uh, lots and lots of ideas and theorems that for SL two Z we have LP Fourier LP Fourier summation method even for p equals one and infinity. So, so the and uh, but however, so I say that there is no counter example so far. But uh, I think the natural conjecture. I, I I don't know if it has been made before, but if not, then. Uh, I'm making it is that for uh, for this higher rank arithmetic lattice there shouldn't be no LP Fourier summation method at least for p large enough. I will come to that the condition on p later. So so this is something that we I strongly believe that it's true, but but the 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 the, the, the methods so far fail to achieve exactly this. But but we are not far from this. That's what uh, what comes next. Okay. So so what comes next is that. It, it, it the, 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 the origin comes from, uh, from, from operator space theory or the study of completely bounded maps. So, so it, it's, it's now very well understood that when we are working with non abelian groups or non abelian operator algebras, the, the notion of bounded linear maps I is a very subtle one. It's something that, that is very far from being understood, well understood. But there is a, a notion that is much for with which it's much easier to work, which is the notion of completely bounded linear maps. And so I in I will only talk about this in the setting of, of Fourier uh, summation. So let me just s stick to, to that, that specific setting. So this amounts to give a norm not only on the uh, uh, P norm, not only on the fundamental of gamma, but on the fundamental of gamma tensor some some space of bounded operators to, to be explicit. So so let's denote by SP that people call sometimes CP the Shatton P class. So it's the space of operators on the Hilbert space L2 so that the the, the 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 absolute value to the power of P is trace class. So again, the trace of T to the power of P to the one over P is again a norm. And more generally, if we have F, which is in the tensor product of CP and the fundamental of gamma, we can copy the definition of the norm and we get a new norm on this larger space. And uh, again, uh, formally, every element in this larger space obtained by completion for this norm has a Fourier decomposition formal. And asking whether it's not only formal, but it's, it can be reconstructed by, by, by some clever truncation method, method is 
the interesting notion in this setting. And so since we are asking to, to, ha to reconstruct more elements than before, this is harder to, to, to have an, an LP completely bounded for your summation method than just a summation method as before. And therefore, it's more plausible that we can find counterexample of the previous question. And indeed, that's what we did with, with LaFox. So the first, the, the result that, that led me to this, to this, um, to this area of uh, doing analysis with these higher rank arithmetic groups is the, the result that comes now that the f in for SL3, it's a theorem that we had with Vincent Laforgue and uh, for, for, for higher rank, it's something that we did later with Tim Delat. And it's a very strong, in, this, in the way it's written, it's a very strong negation of, of, uh, of LP sum summability. I, namely, so if we put some assumption on P, that P is not too close to two, then there is a single function F that witnesses the, 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 the non approximation, the non, non, the fact that you cannot recover F from its uh, Fourier coefficients, meaning that if I take any finitely supported function on the group, if I truncate it by this function here, then the distance to f that I obtain is at least one. So one is just an arbitrary constant. And uh, in, in particular, this clearly shows that, uh, that, uh, that, we have, um, that we do not have a completely bounded uh, Fourier summation method for this uh, range of p. And if we consider not SL3 but SLD, the, the interval of values of p that, that we are not allowing uh, becomes much smaller, becomes smaller. Um, okay, th this, the way it's phrased, it's uh, slightly surprising because by definition, the uh, LP of L gamma with L sp is the, is the closure of the, the, the finite rank tensor. So you would expect that, that you, you can you can truncate it in some way, but actually the theorem says that you cannot. Uh, okay, so, so this is, uh, this is so far what we have been able to obtain with, with uh, on, uh, on this Fourier analysis questions. Uh, now I will move to a slightly different topic, which as we will see is, is, is actually very much related, but apparently it comes from a different origin. So which are these approximation properties. So now the, the origin is, is less old than the, the Fourier analysis question. It, it goes back to, well, to the work of Banach, but it was mainly Grothendieck who, who, who really realized the importance of, of this notion in his, uh, in his work on tensor products of, of, of Banach spaces, of topological vector spaces, so in his thesis. So, so the definition is as follows. So a space is said to have the approximation property, a Banach space is said to have the approximation property if the identity map from X to X belongs to the closure of the finite trunk operators for the topology of pointwise convergence on compact subsets. So this is perhaps, uh, well, this is a, 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 it's perhaps more natural to, 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 to give the, 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 uh, the, the equivalent form saying that it's equivalent to saying that compact operators can be approximated in norms by finite op operators, but you ha there is a small uh, s thing that you the, the, the domain has to be allowed to, to change. And so Grothendieck in his thesis, he observed that this, this notion is very relevant for what he was interested in at that time, which was the tensor product of topological vector spaces. And he in his, if I remember correctly, in his thesis, which ap appeared much later, he, he conjectured that uh, every space should have the approximation property. And then later, in what we call now his resume, which the, the dates are the dates that are on that sign but they are very strange dates. So, but uh, this is the, he conjectured the opposite. He, he changed his mind. He spent, actually, in the, uh, recently there was the, his, his memoirs, Recolt and Semai have been published in, by in Gallimard. So it's several thousands of texts of thoughts about mathematics and mathematicians and m many other things. And in this, Recolte Semai, he, he has a very touching part where he explains the, the year, the whole year that he spent on trying to prove the second form of the conjecture, meaning that there is a space without the approximation property. So he says that he spent a whole year obsessed by this question. And okay, the, so, so just to, to, <laughs> to insist, so, so this, con this second form of the conjecture was confirmed later by inflow, so it's uh, indeed there are spaces that do, have, do not have the approximation property, 
And uh, as Grothendieck even himself says, the techniques, this is, so th th this is a, a construction. This is a very clever uh, construction, combinatorial construction. So you, you construct, you put a norm, you define a norm by a very, very complicated way so that it doesn't have the f property. And now there have been many other constructions that are also very clever every time and uh, with other features. And so there are lots of examples that have been constructed that have uh, the association property. But if you want one that is natural, and natural is not well defined, but uh, say one that, that Grothendieck knew, then there is one example, which is the space of bounded operators on a Hilbert space for the operator norm. It's a, an amazing result by Shankovsky in the early 80s. And, uh, and I think it might be my favorite open problem I in math is to, to, to find s other examples. F find other examples that, that would be satisfying to Grothendieck. Find Banner spaces that are natural and that fail the approximation property. And if it, if it was for a reason that we could understand, it would be better. Because B of L2, the, the, construct the proof is it's a masterpiece, but it's very, very, very intricate. And it's hard to say what is, in one sentence, what's the reason for the failure of, 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 of the approximation property. Whereas, actually, for, for the conjecture that is here, for SF3Z, the conjecture is that it doesn't have the approximation property. And the reason is that because it's a higher rank lattice. So it's, we have this tension between arithmetic origin and analysis. And since if there is no reason, no real arithmetic reason for, for this to happen, there should, this should not happen. And th that's really the, the hope that we have. And uh, so, it's so far, it's only a conjecture. And uh, it's a conjecture that is pro certainly the, the first form for, uh, for the, for the L infinity an infinity norm for the reduced sister algebra. This is some certainly a conjecture that has been looked, considered a lot in the in earlier. And uh, actually, I believe that for a long time, it was also believed that for SL2, it would be a counterexample. And this was exactly what uh, what Ufer Hagerup disproved. He proved that SL2, or the for the free group, this reduced sister algebra do have the approximation property. And this was a very big surprise because it's non-nuclear sister algebra. And this is what led to all these interactions between geometric group theory and, um, and operator algebras. <laughs> and I, I, I believe that this, I very strongly believe in this conjecture. But again, this is a, a, only a conjecture. But if you do not work with Banach spaces, but we work with s vector valued coefficients, vector valued functions, and operator space setting, then this conjecture was solved. And this is what we did with Lafort also. So the theorem that we have with, with Lafort is very similar to the previous one for a good reason. And it says that if we consider, so it's with Lafort for SL3 and with Tim Delat for, for, for the other groups, uh, that, um, that th this conjecture is, the previous conjecture is true in the operator space setting. And again, what came as a surprise is that uh, there is a, uh, for the proof to work, there was a condition on P. We needed P to be not too close to two, because of course for P equals to two, we know that everything is, we have Hilbert spaces, so there is nothing interesting going on from the Banner space point of view and the operator space point of view either. S but for, for, for P, the close to two, the proof simply are not working at all. And this, this and, and what is nice is that the, the condition on P becomes weaker when P becomes uh, w w the, the, the when d becomes larger. And in particular, if we could prove that the, the condition that is only sufficient on p was also necessary, this would settle Co Cohen's conjecture on distinguishing these phenomena algebras. And this hope, which is a kind of a crazy hope that has not been achieved so far, and uh, I, I'm, not, I'm clearly not conjecturing that, the, uh, I, I'm not expecting I'm not sure at all that, that it will work, but it, it, it brings some hope to, 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 to import really uh, more advanced harmonic analysis techniques to, to the story of operator algebra. So this is, these are things that we, we are trying to do we mainly with Javier Parcet and Eric Ricard and um, people around them. But I will not say much about this because I want to, to switch to a third direction where the where the again the, the the recent the recent ideas have been developed to, to, to make some progresses which are more dynamical nature which are group actions on banners group actions on manifolds so so let me just state a theorem that will be 
presented in much more details in the, the ICMEN talks by Aaron Brown and David Fisher that, uh, that are happening also. Uh, so it's a theorem by Brown, Fisher, and Hurtado, which said that if you have a, an action of SLDZ by diffeomorphisms on a compact manifold of dimensions that is strictly less than D minus 1, then such, a, such an action is, is completely trivial in the sense that it comes from a finite quotient of SLDZ. And this is a, this is a major progress, uh, well, it's a major result in, uh, in, uh, in dynamics, uh, in, in smooth dynamics of, 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 of these arithmetic groups. And the proof is, 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 is a massive proof. It has lots of parts. And one of the key parts is the result that I'm writing here, which is, well, it, it's, it's, it's a combination of, 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 a, of things that Brown, Fisher, and Astralo have proven and something that, that I have done also. And it says the following. So if we have an action of SLDZ on any manifold, any compact manifold, then to, to ensure that this action is isometric for some Riemannian metric that, that, that is on M, it's enough to prove something much weaker, namely that the, the derivatives of the elements of gamma, they grow sub-exponentially. And of course, if, if, if they are isometric, the derivatives are one, so of course they do not grow exponentially. But if you only know that they grow exponentially, the arithmetic nature of SLDZ forces that to, to actually to be bounded and even by isometries for some, for some, for some clever choice of a Riemannian metric on this space. And this is a, this is a, a, a theorem that uh, follows from a, a theorem that I proved, inspired a lot by theorems that Lafork proved earlier for co-compact lattices about representations of SLDZ on, uh, on, on Hilbert spaces, but they are not isometric by some growth of the derivatives. And then if you apply this general theorem for actions on, on, uh, on some Sobolev spaces that are associated to the fundamental algebra M, uh, then you will uh, you obtain this theorem here. Okay. Now, a uh, last brief direction, the fourth direction that I want to, to, to emphasize. It, it's part of, of a general theme that has been developed for at least uh, about 15 years, very extensively by many people. Uh, so of course, by Daphne, Gelander, and Mono that I cite here. Also, uh, Vincent Lafogue himself. Also, C Cornelia Droutou, uh, Chatterjee, Haglund, and uh, many others. So it's about yeah, group actions on these arithmetic groups on, on, on Banach spaces. And we have this very strong conjecture that has inspired me a lot. It's still open. That actions on uniformly convex Banach spaces by isometries of such groups should have a fixed point. And this is a generalization of the theorem by Cashdan and Delorme that this is true for, for Hilbert spaces. It's also true for LP spaces. This is what Badafam and Bono proved. And also, very interestingly, it's proved if you replace the ring of integers z by the ring of integers in some function field. So uh, you replace z by some polynomials in a over a finite field, and Vincent Lafogue was able to, to prove this theorem in this setting. In the real case, there are some results. So if we take x that is nice enough, the conjecture is true only for d large enough. This is what we obtained with, uh, with Tim Delat and uh, Masatomi Mura a few years ago. Okay, so that's that's all for for this. this is, I, I'm being very brief. I'm deliberately forgetting many things. For example, many interesting questions about the the, the expander graphs that come from this this arithmetic group. That I, this is this would lead us too far. And I, I really want to, to devote some time not on the on the on the result, but on the proof because the, the proof is, as I said, I believe that it's 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 an idea that that deserves to be to be known. Because it's it's a, it's it is a, 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 a new a, a new idea, and uh, I feel I, I feel that I can say it without any shame because it's not my idea. It's uh, it's Vincent Lafogue's idea, and uh, I, I really believe that this is a wonderful one of the many wonderful ideas that Vincent Lafogue has been has come up uh, recently. Okay, I call it rank, re re rank zero reduction because contrary to SL2 reduction, which was re reduction to, to SL2, which is a rank one group, we reduce, we do all the analysis 
on compact groups, and compact groups are, are, this, uh, are called rank zero group for, 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 the, for in, in this, this field. And so, well, this is, uh, I think this slide is, uh, says again what I had already said. So, so the usual SL2 reduction techniques for all the problems that I stated, I chose this problem directly for that, for that uh, purpose, they, they all fail. SL2 reduction does not say anything for these results. Uh, but the, the, this, this idea is, do is to first analy do analysis on compact groups, which is kind of striking when you come from, from at least from my background, because you, uh, you always have the feeling that compact groups, there is nothing uh, interesting to say anymore for the questions that, 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 that I've been studying at least. But actually, the La Fork tells us the opposite, um, that, um, the that there is some interesting thing to say about compact groups, and then we exploit how the compact groups are distorted in the ambient group. We, we exploit the higher rank hypothesis there to, to obtain some very strong consequences on the, the group itself. Okay, so let me uh, be slightly more precise. And to be slightly more precise, I want to, 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 to explain one result, which is, which is not new. So let me prove that SL3R has cash dense propositity. So there are lots of proofs that known that SL3R has cash dense propositity. There is one computer assisted proof by, uh, I think, Tom and Netzer, which is a part, and all the others, except this one, use in a way or another SL2 reduction. And di here there is a one that is that, that goes completely different direction. So to, to, to state the, the sketch of to sketch the proof, I just need to introduce three groups. So I have the group G, which is SL3R. I have K, that is SO3, which is a maximal compact subgroup in SO3. So the, the pair GK is a pair that has been studied a lot. It's really the central object, the G mod K is the symmetric space. It's, it's a very interesting, important pair. And then we, we, we will make, we, make we, we will play the game to, to make, to, to replace G by K. And so we want to find the so we, we want to introduce the subgroup of K that will play an important role uh, that, that, co that, that, that gives the, the symmetric space associated, associated to it. So we consider U, which is SO2, which is a stabilizer of a point, so that K mod U is naturally the two-sphere. And the first step to, to prove a result about uni unitary representations of SL3R is to say something about unitary representations of K. And it the, the, the result that we prove that we, that will come in so uh, I just give the, the proof in two two lines and then I will give the proof in two slides with uh, slightly more details. So the first step is to prove holder continuity of matrix coefficients of interior representations with respect to in vectors that are invariant by the subgroup U. And so this is this is a kind of a <laughs> it, 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 such a result, if it's true, it's, it, the proof has to be easy, and the proof, indeed, it's true, and the proof is not very involved. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's something that we can prove using some spherical harmonic analysis going back to the 30s or this kind of stuff. Then the second step is to, 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 to make the game of, 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 of comparing the, the two pairs. So we have the pair UK and then the pair KG, and we want to, 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 to see how these two pairs interact, and in this way we'll promote the, the holder continuity of matrix coefficients of K that are U invariant to holder continuity of matrix coefficients of G that are K invariant. So, so far, this is okay. So local estimates leads to local estimate, and what is very important here, this is where higher rank comes from, is that if we try to be more precise and, and to, to see how the, the, the holder constant, the local holder constant depends on the point, we will have an exponential decay at infinity. And in this way, from local estimates but that are exponentially good, we will obtain that matrix coefficients of G satisfy the Cauchy criterion in a very strong way and therefore they converge and from that property will follow very easily. And so let me, so this was in a uh, uh, one line proof, let me give a, a two, two lines proof, now give me a, a two slides proof. So the, let me first focus on uh, the first aspect, so I wrote a proposition that says exactly 
what I said orally, so maybe I will insist uh, on the, the equivalent form that is also interesting. So let's consider the following family of operators and the two spheres. So the two spheres in R3. Uh, for every parameter delta between minus 1 and 1, I will consider an operator T delta on L2 of the sphere, which is kind of a, a Radon transform. They call it a Radon transform in, in harmonic analysis. It's, it's T delta F at X is the average of X on the cycle given by the point y on the sphere whose scalar product is equal to delta. So the points at distance arc cosine of delta from x. And th so these are very singular operators. When delta varies, we, the, we are integrating f on subsets of, uh, that are disjoint. So, 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 so it's the, 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 the result that we have here is kind of surprising. So even though the, the we are these are sing very singular and mutually singular operators. The, the norm of L to norm, the norm of the, the, op the difference, the operator number of the difference is very small when delta and well between t delta and t zero. And that's that's the result on compact groups that that, that we exploit. The second part, the second part I like to, to call it it's an exploration of the vial chamber. So so the first part was very much analytic and the second part is completely combinatorial or geometric if you want. And that, that the, the fact that this is combinatorial is, is very important later on. So I, I, I'm, I just draw what I just said. So you have for the pair KU, the quotient K mod U, the symmetric space is the two sphere. Uh, for the pair GK, G mod K is the symmetric, it's the space of uh, positive definite matrices on uh, with determinant one of psi three if you want. And uh, below that, I wrote the space of double cosets. So, so the double coset space uh, K, uh, the body out on both sides by U. This is just the interval minus one one. This is where the parameter delta was living before. And uh, for for G mod K, the, the the double coset space is just one thick of the plane. So you you, you are we are just uh, expressing the polar decomposition, the saying that every matrix three by three matrix can be written as the product of of an orthogonal matrix, a diagonal matrix of determinant one, and another uh, orthogonal matrix. So, so the, this elementary fact identifies this space of double coset with this vial chamber. And what we do, what Lafort does, he looks at all the k equivariant ways of seeing the sphere into the higher rank symmetric space. Okay, there are many ways of doing that. For any two such spheres, it gives rise on, on in the quotient to a, a, a map, a natural map from the from the double coset space, the compact double coset space to the non-compact double coset space. And if you have a look at this, it, it sends this line, this line segment, two line segments in the vial chamber. And you, you see that you have many forms. Uh, I just drew two of them. There, are, there is a third kind that is not interesting for us. These two, these two kinds are very interesting and this come out from the, from the higher rank hypothesis. And you see that you can go on and uh, you can draw, a, you, you can join every two points in the vial chamber using paths that come from these segments like this. And uh, wha wha the, the wha what I cannot explain now, what you have to do a computation that explores some kind of hyperbolicity there, is that if, if, if you look at such a segment that is very far from the origin in the vial chamber, you, you, the, the picture is very much mis misleading because you, you get a very, very, very distorted copy of the segment. Actually, the, it's a very, very small pa segment around the, the center of this segment is sent to almost all the corresponding segment here. And this is, this is the crucial thing that allows you to say that for example, for F property T, the, the, the U, the, 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 the holder constant decays exponentially, and therefore you, you, you can obtain from these local, local estimates that are very strong, you can, uh, you can combine them along a zigzag path like this to obtain global estimates that are everywhere. Okay, ju just to, to summarize what we just did, uh, so th there is one step which is analytic on the compact group. And the second step is purely combinatorial. And so if you are not interested in unitary representations, but you're interested in, in some other kind of problems, usually the, 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 the only issue is the first step. But this is a very good point because for us, for in analysis, 
analysis on compact groups is often considered as trivial or very easy. It's not always the case. There, there are some challenges, and there, there were some challenges to obtain the, the theorem that, we, that, that I, I explained in the first part. But really, all the challenges are, all, most of the challenges are, are, are on the, comp uh, the compact level. And that's what makes us, uh, that, that allows us to, 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 to prove of all the results that I had here. So I had prepared a slide where I explained exactly where the challenges were, but I think I can leave them on the slide and stop now. Thank you. Thank you very much, the speaker, Professor Duda Saleh, and the audience who attended the lecture. Goodbye.